Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's Synopsys webinar. My name is Karim Gench. I'm the product manager for the Simpleware group at Synopsys, and the title of today's talk is AI Powered Efficiency NHATCH and Synopsys for Patient Specific Image Based Surgical Planning. My colleague Stephen Luke, an application engineer for the Simpleware group within Synopsys, will also be presenting. And as a guest speaker today, we have Mike Phipps, who is the co-founder, CEO, and president of InHatch, a technology company specializing in streamlining and scaling the design and delivery of patient-specific services through workflow automation. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'd like to start by giving a very high-level view of Simpleware. We'll get into more of the details of who we are and uh, what we do for both Simpleware uh, at Synopsys and NHatch, but just from a very high level, I'd like to start off by showing the 3D image to 3D model workflow. That's what Simpleware is good at, and that's what we do very effectively. So we take 3D image data, uh, DICOM data is the typical clinical data set. We bring that into the Simpleware software and we can convert that from a 3D image into a 3D model. And then from there, you can go to third party solutions if you wanted to go into surgical planning, guide, device design, etc. What we started noticing is in the market that people didn't know who to go to when building these workflows. And it ended up being a mix of in-house developed code, uh, connecting to others, and, and a bit of a mix of, of what people were able to do. And we saw a big lacking in efficiency of building out these huge workflows. So we've started talking with a company called NHatch and have been very impressed with what we've seen so far and uh, the synergies that we have. So just to give, again, a very high level overview, please don't hold me to this. It's very scalable and flexible the way these things are done. But from a high level, how this would work with NHatch is uh, you'd go from 3D images, again, DICOM data, bring it into NHatch within that environment to do things like DICOM verification, check your metadata, make sure your data is of a good quality for your workflow, bring that into Simpleware, perform your uh, 3D image to 3D model process that can be automated uh, with AI enabled tools. And then from there, exporting back into NHatch for the surgical planning guide or device design workflow. Again, that's very flexible what you can do with NHatch. It's, it's very impressive um, uh, with their case portal and different ways that you can manage your data and manage your workflow. But we find this working together, we can find a nice joint solution uh, that works from end to end for our customers. So to give you a bit of bearings on what's going to happen in the presentation, my colleague Stephen Luke will start off by giving a presentation, or I'll give an overview of Simpleware and, uh, uh, within Synopsys. And then my colleague Stephen Luke will give a demo of the process. Uh, in this case, we're working on a knee. So we're using a total knee arthroplasty as an example of how to segment that, go from an image to a model uh, using various means in Simpleware, and then how to automate that. And then Mike, will go uh, uh, give an overview of NHatch, this DICOM verification process, uh, and then you know uh, handing it off to Simpleware, do the segmentation, bring it back into NHatch, and then continue along that process to build uh, this surgical planning workflow uh, for this knee example. And then I'll summarize everything at the end, and we'll open it up for questions and answers. So to give you an idea of Simpleware and our product group and who we are, we develop high-end 3D image processing software. Again, this is off-the-shelf software you can license uh, uh, from Simpleware, as well as a lot of customization that we offer uh, as services. So from a high level, again, 3D image to 3D model. That's our lane, that's in our DNA of, of what we're very good at of doing and helping our customers with. So we have dedicated sales support and services teams globally, and we work with customers in clinical life sciences and as well as other areas, but primarily within the life sciences. So simpleware for medical and life sciences, you know, what does that workflow look like? And what is the what are the markets that we work within? So if you look at this gray arrow on the left, that's encompasses what's within Simpleware. So you would bring in your image data, your DICOM data, that's where that's the starting point for Simpleware. Once you bring it into the software, you do your image processing, you do something called segmentation. Segmentation is where you pull out the, the anatomy from that image data. Uh, you can do different types of landmarking, different types of image processing. I won't go into all the details, but then you can generate your model. And from there, you can do some analysis and reporting, and then you can export that model for various contexts of use. So going down, you can see below how our clients consider Simpleware to be a best-in-class tool for medical image processing, uh, manual to AI-enabled automated segmentation. Uh, we can export STLs, 3MF, CAD, simulation exports for varied contexts of use, and then you can fully customize the software. And looking to the right are the markets we play in, implants, guides, surgical planning, R&D simulation, in silico trials, 
point of care 3D printing. These are the different markets that we play in uh, typically with our software. So the first level of automation is with scripting. We have a Python and C-sharp API. Uh, you can uh, build the API. You can do macro recording, convert it from a log into scripts, build plugins. You can have a fully customized solution. So anything you can click, you can script within the tool. Beyond that is the second level of automation we call it. This is our off-the-shelf AI-enabled tools. We've built quite a few now, ankle, knee, hip, hip revision, uh, where you can include uh, a noisy data, and we've, we've trained our models to handle that, shoulder, spine, CMF uh, from CT, and then from the MRI, we have a knee uh, solution as well. Uh, we have cardio uh, so solutions for the heart, 3D and 4D heart CT, and then we have the, a tool we call the bone fill uh, tool, which is mostly for uh, orthopedic applications as is, and is AI enabled. The third level of automation, this is where we automate segmentation and landmarking of any anatomy from any imaging modality. This is integrated into Simpleware. We do uh, the ground truth training is either provided by Simpleware or the customer. And we have uh, examples from customers who do 500 hips, knees, and ankles per month. And we reduce their workflow time within Simpleware by 94% by enabling or deploying these AI solutions. Uh, another one process 5,000 cases in the first three months, about 60 cases per day. And we brought it from 30 minutes down to uh, a sub five minutes per case. So when you're scaling at that level, uh, 25 minutes is very significant in terms of engineering time and ensuring reliability and repeatability of your results. So everything that we talk about here, everything falls within the spectrum of automation. So the level of automation depends on the target application, the amount of available data and level of current anticipated scale. So these are long-term relationships we have our, with our customers and we help grow with them as they grow their businesses. So you can see on the, I have the spectrum of automation listed with manual, semiotic to fully automated. Uh, so if we start on the left and you can see there's a number of data sets per year and the relative time savings. So on the left is Simpleware Medical. That's our off the shelf software. That's where you import the data, build your workflow and figure out what you wanna do. And then once you figured that out, you move to scripting and there's some repeatable tasks. You can start writing scripts. Anything you can click, you can script. So you can get some automation and some time savings there. And then we move into our off the shelf auto segmenters. And this is where you're dealing with perhaps up to hundreds of data sets uh, per month or per year, sorry. And this is where you can get savings of up to 50 to 90% depending on your application. Uh, uh, we recently did a webinar uh, with a customer implant cast and they showed single click results. Whereas with other cases, they still had about 15 minutes of cleanup. Uh, you know, so for these off the shelf tools, can be very useful for some workflows. But then we have customers who have a significant scale and a very focused application. And this is where we get into hundreds to thousands of data sets per year. We use their data to build an AI tool specifically for them that they own, uh, that they, can, they alone can run and is for them only. And this is where we see 90 plus percent time savings uh, with the segmentation landmarking workflow. So from there, I'll pass it on to my colleague, Steven, and he's gonna give a nice overview, uh, a nice little demo of uh, Simpleware being used to segment the knee and how that's automated before passing it off to Mike. Okay, this is the Simpleware medical user interface. Um, I'm gonna use this to import some DICOM data and process it through to STL. We're working from DICOM images today, so I'll select the DICOM images format you can see a range of other image and mesh import formats are available. We'll scan for a folder of DICOM files. The folder is already selected. Scan that folder for DICOM series, which is a single series. Today, you can see we can preview the image data itself, also the DICOM tags prior to import. When the data is imported, you'll be greeted with a fairly standard uh, image processing layout, half orthogonal, coronal, sagittal, axial views, and a 3D view, which is currently presenting a volume render of the grayscale data. For this demo today, I'm going to start off with a manual segmentation workflow before moving on to our automated uh, AS Ortho AI driven segmentation feature. So we'll start with the manual traditional segmentation process. Before beginning the segmentation, I'm going to apply a crop because we're only interested in the knee today. Turn off the volume render. 
And as we are only interested in the hard tissue and it's got good grayscale contrast with the soft tissue, we'll use a threshold based approach. The software has some presets for CT data, including one for bone. So we'll select that preset and apply the threshold to generate our core segmentation, which we can then preview in the 3D view. We can see we have some uh, floating islands from the CT bed and a little bit from the soft tissue. So we'll apply a mask flood fill, a connectivity filter, essentially to remove those floating islands of the mask. We'll update the preview to see that that's been removed. Everything disconnected from the place in which I clicked was removed. Let's remove the patella, but that's okay because we're only interested in the femur and tibia today. So the next stage of the workflow then is we have to split the, uh, the bones. In this case, we can see the knee joint, uh, the bones are very, very close. So we need a tool to split these along this boundary. In the software, we have a split regions tool for exactly this. For this tool, again, we have presets. We have one for the knee. And what we need to do in the slice views are paint markers, which tell the algorithm where we want to split the bones. So we'll mark the femur and the tibia. We'll mark this in a few places primarily because we've got such a narrow join here between the bones. It's good to give the algorithm as much information as possible where we want to apply that split. So we'll do this in the coronal and sagittal views. And we'll also mark fibula too. When we apply the split regions, we can see how the split looks. As we do not need the fibula for this workflow, we can remove this from the project. And we can then look at tidying up our project, our masks further. So let's start with femur. So we can see that our split wasn't completely successful where the, uh, where the bones join together. So what we'll do is we'll just apply a paint with threshold to that local region to just add in a little bit more segmentation, just our threshold, just to ensure we get a good split of the bones. This highlights one of the challenges of manual segmentation in cases such as this, where the bones are very, very closely joined together. So now we've added a bit of segmentation across that hole. We're going to apply a new feature for the V202406 release, which is the bone filling tool. This is a tool which aims to take in a mask such as this, a bone mask, uh, generated from a threshold and minimal edits and output a solid output. We'll apply this to see how the output looks. Now that the filter is finished, we can see we have a solid output. Before we apply a little bit of smoothing to the mask, we'll just scroll through the slices and see how the mask looks compared to the grayscale data underneath. See if any edits are required. So far, it looks pretty good. Okay, reasonably happy with that. So we'll apply a smoothing filter just to finish off this mask. We use a recursive Gaussian. And there we have the femur mask finalized. We can now 
repeat the process for the tibia mask. Now here we've got some bad segmentation where it didn't split the femur and tibia nicely. We've processed the femur already, so what I can do is do a boolean operation to subtract the finished femur from this tibia mask, and this will remove this big chunk of segmentation. That looks pretty good now. See, we've got a few floating islands, so we'll use our mask flood fill again to remove those. And we've got a few sections here which look like they may not be part of the tibia. We'll have a look in the grayscale data to see. That looks reasonably spurious. What we'll do is we'll remove this in the 3D view using our 3D editing tools. Okay, that looks reasonably good. So we can use our bone filling tool again to solidify this bone. Again, we'll scroll through the slice views, check how our mask how our mask looks relative to the grayscale data. There is nothing obviously wrong around the head of the tibia. So we'll apply our smoothing filter to finalize our tibia mask. So that shows you a uh, traditional segmentation workflow. Um, in Simpleware using the traditional segmentation tools and the new bone filling tool. So that's a relatively manual approach. What we can also do is use our automated, fully automated uh, AS Ortho tool. So this is an AI driven uh, segmentation algorithm for a range of anatomical uh, features. We're doing a knee today, so we're going to use the knee for CT tool. I simply need to select the bones which I wish to segment. We don't need the patella or the fibula, so I'll deselect those. And I'm going to leave landmarks uh, ticked on so we can create landmarks as part of this segmentation workflow. Apply the tool, allow it to run through. This is an AI uh, segmentation algorithm, which requires an NVIDIA GPU, as it is a GPU accelerated process. And now that the tool has finished running, we're presented with a summary dialog showing the masks, which were identified along with a range of landmarks. We sped up the processing time there um, to uh, minimize the, the runtime for the webinar, but uh, just to let you know, the realistic runtime for this tool on a fairly standard spec engineering laptop is approximately two minutes. So here are the masks derived from the AI segmentation tool. No smoothing is applied, so if we wish to apply some smoothing, uh, we do that using the segmentation tools as shown previously. So we'll apply our recursive Gaussian to our new masks generated by the AI. And then to export these as STLs, we need to convert them to triangulated surfaces. Currently, they are just voxels. So we need to generate a high quality preview. We can do that in the software. We can generate surfaces in a number of ways. The quickest and easiest way to generate STLs for ongoing processing is to generate a model preview. We'll set up the model to uh, reduce the triangle count slightly. We're going to decimate the masks to a global number of triangles of approximately 100,000. We'll now generate our model preview of the two visible masks.
Uh, if I turn on the edges, we can see the triangulation of the two objects. And we'll convert these to surfaces. And now in the surfaces node, node of the software, we can see our two objects, which we will rename to Synopsis Tibia and Synopsis Fema. And now I can export the STLs directly from the dataset browser within the context menu and export the surface as an STL in our scale binary, which I will do now for FEMA and repeat that for the tibia. These STLs are now ready to be uploaded back into the NHATCH system. Finally, we have the landmark measurements, which are also generated by the simple AS Ortho tool. These are a series of point measurements on the surface of the segmentation at various anatomical landmarks. You can see, for example, we've got the, uh, the condyles. These are a series of uh, coordinates in global or local uh, coordinate system, which can be exported to a CSV and uploaded into the NHATCH system. These landmarks can be useful for uh, surgical guide designs and various surgical planning workflows. All right, thanks, Stephen. At this point, I would like to take it from here and talk about how NHATCH can help establish patient-specific workflows. Our goal is to develop adaptable workflows that cater to personalized experiences and can efficiently manage a naturally varied process at scale. Our solution addresses the growing complexity in personalized medicine, particularly in case and data management. We understand that integrating different software and organizing resources across a distributed workforce can be really challenging. The portal is a centralized web application for preoperative planning designed to streamline patient information, surgical case management, by allowing multiple team members to collaborate effectively, ensuring that everyone knows their responsibilities and can provide optimal preoperative care. The portal not only serves as a delivery vehicle for AI services, but also offers users a comprehensive solution for managing medical cases and data seamlessly through a given case. The portal features a customizable dashboard tailored to different user roles, such as surgeons, engineers, or radiologists, or really any other role that you want to create. Each user sees only the information relevant to their role. For instance, a surgeon can view their cases while an admin or a radiologist or an engineer would see the information in cases that are pertinent to them. This ensures that everyone is focused on their specific tasks and responsibilities, enhancing overall um, efficiency. Organizations can create workflows specific to different product lines, allowing for seamless integration with various softwares. For example, you can have workflows tailored to knee surgery planning integrating imaging software and implant design tools. This type of customization ensures that the portal meets the specific needs of each medical device company, enhancing their operational efficiency. Additionally, administrators can control permissions and assign access based on roles, creating collaboration within one platform that can happen in an asynchronous fashion. Our portal includes some advanced 2D to 3D imaging segmentation tools. Although segmentation is not the primary focus for all of our customers, we can provide the capabilities for those who need it when requested. For example, we have developed an X-ray to 3D model solution for knee preoperative planning, which accurately identifies bone edges and generates 3D models for surgical planning and anatomical printing. This is something we have gone live with on for a specific deployment for one of our customers earlier this year. Um, this X-ray 2D 3D reconstruction technology facilitates clinical grade 3D reconstruction of knee bones using standard X-rays, eliminating the requirement for CT scans for um, patient-specific guides. Our fit code module determines the most suitable implant size and position by analyzing patient anatomy and implant options according to a product surgical technique. Using implant parameters such as bone landmarks from segmentation software as constraints, the module runs through the entire implant size range to select the best fit. The backend process also considers surgeon preference for each patient when positioning the implant. We offer this customized solution for various product lines, including knees, 
hips, spines, and other areas upon request. The whole idea behind this fit code is that we're trying to um, predict an implant's fit, allowing our customers to then design instruments more, um, more consistently. Our portal also makes it easy to design, like I said, surgical guides, anatomic models, and other instruments by directly integrating with CAD applications. We can automatically generate these models and instruments based on a segmented data and implant position, saving time and ensuring, preci um, and ensuring precision. This automation helps build solutions that can semi-automatically create anatomic models and surgical guides based on certain approved preoperative plans, cutting out a lot of the needless like work that you have to do manually. Portal also offers case reports and approvals. So our process supports a 21 CFR Part 11 compliant digital signature process, allowing users to upload and track form data efficiently. This feature ensures that all approvals and reviews are documented and meet regulatory requirements. So users can easily upload different forms, track who has been approving them, and maintain compliance throughout the whole workflow process. Design, so basically we're allowing our customers to then design the optimal surgical strategy within a workflow and data collection to maintain that compliance. And then in terms of integration and collaboration, like our software is designed for easy integration with various systems. You know, whether it's doing something with an ERP system like NetSuite or Acumedica or building custom AI models for tasks like X-ray to 3D model conversions, um, our portal is open to any type of collaboration. So additionally, we support integrations with different 3D segmentation software, such as Synopsys Simpleware, um, ensuring compatibility with a wide range of tools. Now that the overview is done, let's start by opening up a user who has already logged into the system and walk through a workflow that includes case creation, DICOM upload, segmentation review, fit code processing, and virtual surgical planning review. This specific user is logged into the portal as a clinician user. So once you get logged in like I am here, you're usually presented with a dashboard displaying all of your active cases. So, you know, for example, I have four active cases here. Um, that I'm actively a part of. And based on the filtering up top, I only have um, one case that actually needs my attention. Um, and so the nice thing is that you this filter kind of draws your attention to what you need to be completing at this moment. Um, additionally, you know, within the site, you have the you know, different columns of the form data that's presented throughout the you know, whole workflow process. And depending on um, your management, you can you know, adjust those specific data fields to display um, how you like it. Um, but for the sake of this demo, I'm going to go ahead and start a new case. So to initiate a new case, um, a lot of times you're required to input some minimum user or case data. This data usually varies based on the requirements for whoever is managing a specific workflow. So in the case of like a you know clinician, you just you don't need to you know select any other users. But if I was logged in as a sales rep, um, there'd probably be a, like a, a good chance here that I'd want to be selecting the surgeon or clinician that I'd want this case to be active for. Um, and so you would have that opportunity here. Um, and then for this demo, like um, it looks like uh, the data that we're collecting is going to be like you know date of birth, surgery name, surgery date, et cetera, things like that, um, as well as uploading initial DICOM data. However, what's you know needs to be noted is that this workflow is fully customizable. So different organizations can configure their workflows to ask for more or less information based on their specific needs. And product lines, you know, for example, someone might ask for like patient history or like you know some specific imaging parameters. And I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and fill in this data. We'll just call this um, test three. Okay, put in the date of birth. Let's do something like this. All right, fifteenth. There you go. Surgeon name. That's All right, surgery date. Now the surgery date here is filled out in a way um, where you can kind of block out timing ahead of time. So you can say that um, I can't pick a surgery date anytime before the 25th. So you can you know specify like date ranges of like anything from today's date going two weeks, one week, one day, et cetera. So I'm gonna set schedule this for Wednesday the 31st. I'm gonna go ahead and upload my DICOM data. Now the DICOM data upload um, as part of this process has a um, built-in metadata check. And so what it's doing is um, usually, again, we get the imaging protocol information for, um, for this, usually this technique. 
and you can add in the settings on the admin side of the site and say, I want to look, confirm that the slice spacing is below two millimeters. I want to make sure that my pixel spacing is less than one millimeter. Um, and I want to confirm that there's a zero gauge retilt. So these are all items that you can check. Basically, anything that's in the metadata, we can verify against on upload. Again, just to help reduce any time of like downtime between uploading, uploading DICOM data and finding out that it's not quite compliant. So I'm going to go ahead and upload this. All right. So now that I've basically entered all the, you know, certain name, case details, um, and the surgery date, um, and I've uploaded that company data, and then I'm going to go ahead and start the case. And this this initial step for uh, data entry is pretty crucial. It basically to make sure that all the correct and necessary information is collected to begin the case. Now that we have uploaded the imaging data, you can see that we have progressed to the next stage in the predefined workflow, um, which is review medical imaging data. However, my clinician user doesn't have access to this stage. So since I don't have access, I'm presented with a notification message that can be custom tailored to inform you of any specific information that you, know, you expect that user to have. So in this case, I'm being told that someone's reviewing the data that I've uploaded and that they need to confirm that it meets the requirements. So as a result, let's go ahead and um, log in as this engineering user and um, check to see if I've received any email notifications and start the review process. Checking my email as the engineering user that I talked about, you can see that I've received a message telling me that there's action to be taken on this case. Let's go ahead and click into it. Notifications can be customized to be sent to various user roles with custom prompts to um, each user type to take different actions on a case. So this specific message is telling me that someone's uploaded data and that I can review and download it to begin segmenting. Uh, so the idea is that if the data doesn't meet their requirements needed for processing, um, we can facilitate some type of notification to the user to re-upload data or just inform them that we can't you know, continue to process the case. So let's go ahead and click on the, um, the case. So let's enter this right into the case um, from clicking the link, and we're right on the review medical imaging data stage. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the data that's telling me to review. Normally, a user would review the data for you know, motion or metal artifacts. So we're going to go ahead and just you know, check this out right now, see if it's able to be used for segmentation, see if there's any pre-existing hardware. Um, overall, this looks pretty good. Um, you get an ability to kind of view through that, you know, the data itself. Um, you have options for checking the metadata. So I know I'm right now I'm checking to see if it meets that compliance that we had set ahead of time for imaging data, and it looks like it's good. You can look at your additional you know, metadata fields if there's anything additional outside of the um, you know, verification items that you have. You have the ability to download the metadata here. Um, but overall, this scan is looking pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with this. So I'm going to actually download this scan. And then I'm going to go ahead and accept and you know, submit my digital signature. All right, so now that I've basically reviewed all this stuff, I'm going to go ahead and sign this with my digital signature. All right, let's go. OK. And this is a 21 CFR Part 11 compliant process here. And now that I've applied my digital signature, I can go ahead and submit this, and it will send out a notification to other users, informing them that this has been processed and that's moving forward to the next stage. At this point, the process Stephen demoed earlier will take place. This is where you know a user would be segmenting the bone and generating the anatomical landmarks. So once that process is complete, um, they can begin to you know export the results you know of the 3D models of the bone and of the landmarks, and then re-upload it back into our system. So this process can be performed manually as I'm displaying here, or it can be done through a custom integration if requested. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, click on the uh, zip files that I'm going to be uploading. So I'm doing zip files right now, but the system supports uh, DICOM files, PDFs, images, um, you know, a varying different types of file types. So we have both file types now uploaded. and the whole reason for preparing this upload right now is so that we can run our fit code process, um, which then can prepare the subsequent virtual surgical planning review stage. So, you know, these three files will be used to analyze um, the optimal position of the implant and then present it for a surgeon to review.
As I mentioned earlier, the Fit Code module is a automated custom backend process that allows our customers to digitally recreate surgical plans for specific orthopedic product lines. So you can see here that we've moved on to the next stage, automated implant optimization, which you know this specific fit code module um, that I've set up for the webinar is recreating a TKA surgery using a predefined mechanically aligned surgical technique that I set up. Um, the process integrates the landmarks and segmented bone data that we uploaded from the previous stage with a workflow specific knee product line set of like implants. So there are some predefined implants that were loaded into the system specific to this workflow. Um, the uh, module itself is going to identify the medial and like lateral distal condylar points along with the anatomical axis that will represent items like the ion canal to determine the distal resection location. So this same type of process is applied to the remaining surgical landmarks and instruments that are typically used in a TKA procedure. So once this backend process is complete, an email notification is going to be sent to um, the predefined user role to review the surgical plan. In this case, um, it's the clinician surgeon user who will receive an email for them to review the optimized implant position and either approve it or request changes. So this interactive process ensures that the surgical plan is either tailored to each patient's specific needs, enhancing the overall precision and effectiveness of the surgery. So let's go ahead and check my surgeon email to see if I've received the notification yet. All right, heading back into my search and email, you can see here that I've received a notification. So I'm gonna go ahead and click into it. And this notification is basically just telling me that I have a plan ready for my review um, and that I can look at the 3D files and the um, DICOM images and provide any feedback. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the uh, view case here. Once the viewer has loaded up, you can see here that we're presented with a lot of different information. So we have our three um, DICOM, you know, uh, view planes, you know, axial, sagittal, and coronal, along with a 3D model um, viewer for to review the implant optimization that was provided to us from the fit code. Um, on the right side, we have our all of our landmarks that have been given to us for both femur and tibia from the fit code module, along with some predefined measurements um, for both the bones, as well as for the um, you know, specific to the actual implant size being shown. Um, sometimes some default views within the DICOM um, images are provided depending on the, um, the settings within the fit code. And then we also have the option here to, on the left to see the actual implants and the recommend recommendations. So you can see right here that um, current site is recommending a size F uh, femur and a size E tibia. So let's go ahead and now look at all the landmarks. Jumping to the femoral shaft center, we can jump to that and see that landmark in all three planes. We can expand it out in the axial view and get a better sense of where that's located. Um, but I would like to look at, maybe it'd be um, you know, a good idea to look at the um, epicondylar axis points. So we'll jump to the lateral one right here. Looks pretty good. Um, we have the ability to see the same points in um, the 3D. So maybe you know I want to take an additional measurement. So I have that option right here for, um, I can take a measurement of a line and click these two points that have been input in the system. Okay, and it's providing you with the measurement right there. And you can add some comments to this if you wanted to, like, um, you know, you know, some uh, general comments um, related to the um, actual um, measurements as well. Okay, go back to the uh, normal points here, and maybe we'll expand this back out. And um, maybe the next thing that you actually want to do is actually reviewing the overall position of the implant. Um, but you want to review it on the DICOM itself. So we can click here and click on the uh, fingerprint tool, which kind of um, provides an overlay of the actual implants themselves. And we can maybe take a look at the anterior here on the implant to see if we're happy with the um, position. And we can kind of cycle through a little bit and maybe we want to, you know, review the size, the size below, see if that one's a better fit. And, you know, it's not. Um, so I'm going to actually go back to the size, um, size F here. And you know, we give the users the option to adjust the position if needed. So I can maybe shift this in the medial lateral direction if I needed to. Um, I can you know, come do a quick comparison of the two, going back and forth, all right? Or you can delete that position if you're not happy with it at all. Um, same thing, you can do the same type of movements in 3D if needed. So I do have some adjustments right here with the 3D tool. It's just rather grabbing the gimbal and just moving the implant around. I'm going to delete these as well. 
And you can see here that additionally, um, whenever you make a movement, you have the options here all for approve plan or reject plan. So in general, if you're not happy with any of the options, someone might come in here and just say, I'm gonna reject the whole plan altogether. And they're able to reject it and provide comments about you know, what they do or don't like about the whole overall, everything that's been provided to them. But maybe you wanna make a slight adjustment of, um, maybe you just wanna shift it in the medial direction by like one millimeter. Um, or the lateral direction. So you make a shift in one, mil, um, one millimeter, and essentially you're asking to approve with changes. So you're not saying that the overall plan is wrong. What you're saying is that just um, you have some slight um, modifications that you'd like to be carried over into the next stage of whatever this virtual surgical plan is being used for. Because you know the end result of why we're even displaying this software to the user is so that it could be used for either maybe a patient-specific instrument, maybe this data is being used for uh, navigation, or maybe you're trying to do like right-sized, um, like you know, instrument delivery into the operating room to kind of like you know get smaller instrument trays there. So you know, the overall software itself can be used for many different tools, but we're allowing you to the option to keep track of why someone's making changes whenever it's you know whenever the user is reviewing it. Um, so let's go over some of the other features. Um, we do have options here where I can take a look at, um, maybe we wanna see what the cut looks like on the tibia. So I can jump over to the bones here while highlighting the actual implant. I can maybe do a cut on the actual um, tibia and take a look at that actual cut feature. So you know, I'm gonna go ahead and hide the uh, femur altogether so we can get a better sense of that. Okay. And then I can just get a sense of how some of these um, alignments look. So that actually overall looks pretty good fit. And again, we can go back to some of these views. Maybe we want to go to this um, default view here and jump to it. And it's, a, again, a default view that's provided. Um, that was provided by the fit code that lets us see the overall orientation of the bone at specific, at specific um, you know, pre uh, predetermined landmarks. So this is overall a good fit of the um, this is where it's placed the actual base plate. Overall, it's a relatively decent fit. Um, this is not the, um, yeah, the smaller size is not great there. Um, let's look at the, um, so I'll stick with this on one right here. All right, going back to the implant, I'm probably gonna just, you know, keep the original position because I was actually happy with it. So as I said, overall, you're able to see the um, general you know, fit in, of the implants in terms of the bone and make any necessary adjustments for approval of the final plan. So I'm overall pretty happy with the, in the general position of all the implants. And I'm gonna leave it like, you know, just go ahead and hit approve this plan. Um, and this final step is crucial for confirming that the surgery plan is ready for execution for whatever it's gonna be used for. Um, you know, the idea here is that this could be um, feeding data in for um, patient specific instrument generation, or maybe it's being fed in for navigation data, or it's being used for delivering um, smaller instrument trays into the operating room when you determine the right size. So overall, that's the general process of this, and I'm going to go ahead and click Approve Plan. And then I can do the same things as I've done before, which is sign and accept and apply my digital signature. Thanks for coming by and watching in Hatch's portion of the demo of our surgical case portal, which provides a comprehensive solution for preoperative planning. Um, I'm going to throw it back to Karim so that he can open this up for any questions or comments. Thank you, Mike and Stephen, for that presentation. Again, I'd like to give everybody a quick overview of what we saw, which was an overview presentation of going taking your 3D images and DICOM data into NHatch, doing your DICOM verification, bringing it into Simpleware, performing your segmentation and landmarking, and automating that process within Simpleware software, and then exporting those that, that data into NHatch to continue and build your surgical planning, your guide, guide device design workflow, um, or other processes that you want to do for your end-to-end -end patient specific workflow. Now, I would like to thank everybody and open it up to question and answer. Hi, everyone. Um, Karim here, thanks for watching. Got my colleague Steven, Steven Luke here, and, and Mike is, uh, Turn on his camera. There you go, Mike. Um, yeah, so we just wanted to open this up to questions. Uh, let's see. So I'm, this might be more for Mike. This might be, a, this is a bit more on the, the uh, deployment of PSI guides. So what is the time frame from when a surgeon plans a case and having sterile PSI guides at the hospital for surgery? Three weeks, four to six? I guess that's pretty case by case, right, Mike? Yeah, it's case by case, because I mean, typically the whole process is um, from the website is to keep track of the digital workflow process. 
And so specifically for the PSI, that'll be generated at like a, um, you know, printing manufacturer as well. So the timelines for that will be specific to um, working with that manufacturer. Um, so our process is more about um, expediting um, all the information that's needed to get to the point of printing. Um, but typically, you know, we have done this in the past with our own stuff, um, with some of our clients using our software and with, um, you know, third party um, printing vendors. And we can be looking at times of, you know, expedited can be done in about two weeks, um, typically, and but normally around three weeks. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Another question. Can the uploaded file be previewed uh, prior to submission, submitting data to make sure it's the correct study? Oh, so um, yeah, Mike. that's for me as well. Um, yes, there is a preview setting available um, during the upload process. I just didn't click it. Um, usually that's done um, to kind of confirm that it's the correct study and <laughs> that you're basically sending the right data to be processed. Um, most times that's usually used by like uh, sales reps um, because a lot of times they'll be getting the uh, data that they're uploading and they won't have a Diacom viewer and it's just another quick way to double check that it's like, yeah, this is a knee. This is the right side of the knee that I'm supposed to be sending. So mm -hmm. yeah, we do okay. have that. Great. Uh, another question. Uh, I need to automate my segmentation workflow, but for an anatomy other than what you have shown, can you do it? Uh, so that's a question for us. Uh, I guess, uh, Stephen, I'll try and take that. Uh, but the answer is yes. Uh, so we do have off the shelf tools like I showed of, you know, ankle, knee, hip, hip revision, uh, uh, shoulder, spine, CMF. Uh, but if you have an anatomy, uh, other than that, yes, we can certainly do it. That's where we get into our custom solutions. Even if uh, uh, typically what will happen is if a customer even does a knee, for example, uh, and they like our, our off the shelf tool, but they might need some other landmarks, uh, maybe different anatomies, uh, things like that, uh, then we can customize that as well. So it's we can pretty much do any anatomy as long as you can segment it, um, uh, uh, we can automate it. Uh, uh, and if you have the data, and the scale, we can build uh, some custom solutions for you as well. So that's that's kind of a tipping point for some customers. Some customers, you know, they're not quite uh, at the scale where it justifies an investment in a completely customized solution, or maybe they're doing different types of cases, so it's not narrow enough uh, to to do it or uh, uh, at scale. Uh, so you know, it, we work with our customers to figure out what's the best plan for them going forward, and we try and grow with them. You know, we have some customers that start off with just regular simpleware software off the shelf. Then they started doing scripting. They went through the process of that. They did our off the shelf AI tools and then actually now we're, we're growing, we're getting more cases. We wanna do a customized solution and then we do that with them. So this is a years long process that, that we work with our, with our customers on. Um, okay, so let's see, uh, let's see. Uh, there's a question, who is doing all this in the process of planning a case? The surgeon? So I guess, Mike, I'll let you it, it's a mix. So that's a mix between um, how a medical device company deploys uh, the software to their customers. So um, this is a process that uses um, many different people, like it's a multi-varied team. So there's surgeons um, do sometimes are uploading and accessing it. A lot of times it's sales reps, um, but there is permission roles to set up specific to however to accommodate this workflow process. So you'll have some engineers from the medical device company, surgeons, maybe the surgeon's assistants, um, sales reps and other different people in that whole value chain process. So it's a large team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, and then I guess here's another one. Uh, Steven, this is probably for you. What is, the what is the learning curve for the simpler tool to process the DICOM data to 3D model? Is that something that the user surgeon can be expected to do? So um, the software usability is um, one of our strong points. Um, typically, compared to our immediate competition, we are often praised for the software being very usable. Um, it comes with a extensive suite of tutorials, for example, covering a wide range of application areas, um, including um, preparation for surgical planning. Um, there are things like uh, trials available, which are fully supported. Um, the, uh, the application engineering team, such as myself, are here to help with um, you know, email support and web meetings, etc. So we're there with a, a 30 day trial to get users up to speed during the, uh, the trial process. Um, with regards to the users who are doing the segmentation workflow, I think Mike covered some of that uh, a moment ago. In, in most cases, it's probably not a surgeon using the software, um, but um, it, that's not to say it's never the case. 
I guess, Mike, what, do you th what are your thoughts on, on that threshold between uh, complex software that engineers use to, and then getting it to be usable by a surgeon? It's tough. Like, but I mean, I think that's the whole idea of having a, you know, having softwares like, you know, in Hatch and Simpleware, you know, being able to work together is because there is a specific need and function for high level um, function that would be able to attest to more of an engineer user um, doing something um, and then having that value of a review process for a surgeon. So I would think that you need to simplify software for the surgeons in a sense, but that also then means you may not be able to accommodate the, you know, a lot of the um, sections of actually doing it. The review process can be simplified and working with a platform like ours, you can go back and forth and, you know, segment with an engineer, process a backup for review with a surgeon elsewhere. Um, and I think that process of coming up with a workflow to simplify it accommodates it for most surgeons in most situations. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's keep going. Uh, is the PSI guide designed in NHatch software? No, the uh, the um, PSI guide is designed in a CAD software, and we integrate in with CAD softwares. So basically, it's done as a secondary service, where you know, similar to what we were showing with uh, Synopsis Simpleware, um, when you guys were doing the whole automation scripting, we work with different CAD softwares to automate script that on the back end and get the results from our fit code, as well as from our um, the segmentation results that are provided to feed into generating the um, guide design. Okay. Um... Thanks, Mike. Uh, so Steve, for you, how to check mesh quality comprehensively of my 3D reconstructed geometry in ScanIP. Also, just a quick note, uh, we've had a bit of a, a slight branding change. So ScanIP uh, doesn't exist anymore. It's just purely simpleware. Uh, and uh, as customers come on board and learn more about that, they'll find out. But we're referring to it as just simpleware, and that encompasses the whole tool. So go ahead, Stephen. So Simpleware has a range of tools for validating the, um, the output of the software. Um, if you're looking to compare the 3D surface back to the DICOM data, then we have a range of things like uh, overlays in the 2D slice view, so you can see where your 3D surface contours lie in relation to the grayscale data, so you can validate the accuracy um, of your surface. If you're looking specifically at the mesh in terms of the triangle or tetrahedral quality, then we also have tools for uh, mesh quality in that regard too. Okay. Uh, there's another question. Uh, what features make Simpleware uh, stand apart from other open source segmentation software like 3D Slice or ITK Snap? One thing, Stephen, before before you get into that, I'll mention we have the Simpleware University bundle uh, that's available in the Americas, Europe, uh, Middle East, and Africa. Um, in in South and East Asia, we we don't have the University bundle available, uh, but we do have a, a research license available. But basically, the University bundle is uh, 50 licenses of everything for $1,500 a year. Uh, so obviously, that barrier is reduced significantly, and that kind of puts us in the realm, I think, of open source tools and I mean, obviously, open source tools are free, uh, but uh, really reducing that barrier of entry uh, on the software, especially on the academic side. Um, so there's that side of it. But then I guess, Stephen, in terms of the technical side, you know, what features uh, kind of stand apart from open source tools? So I think, again, usability is one of the big um, factors and support as well. So. Um, Obviously, there are a lot of um, open source tools out there, including some of those mentioned in the question, which can perform similar functionality to Simpleware. Um, but there's much more emphasis on the user working by themselves to figure out how to use the tools, um, any bugs or anything like that. There's not a lot of support um, for, um, for the user in that case. And um, with Simpleware, that's simply not the case. As mentioned, we, you know, our software is praised for great usability. Um, our support is probably second to none in terms of uh, helping the users out and um, responsiveness, et cetera, in that regard. And as mentioned, as Karim mentioned, with the, uh, the new university bundle, you get access to all of this for a very low entry point, um, including the, uh, the automated segmentation tools as well. Uh, so yeah, it's, um, it's fully functional, uh, ease of use, and uh, access to support, um, which kind of makes it stand out apart compared to open source. OK, I think we have enough time for one or two more questions. Mike, does NHatch have specific modules for extremity trauma and CMF? Oh, um, 
uh, yeah, we're working on those actively right now. So, and the main point here is that the modules for um, fit code that we are typically deploying are customer driven request. So um, each fit code module has its own regulatory requirements and pathway for getting access to those modules. Um, so we work with it on a case by case basis since it's specific to an implant um, solution like, you know, yeah. But the answer is yes. Okay, I think one last one, just CT or is X-ray ready, ready to go for planning? Oh, um, I, I guess that is really that like a case, quest for right? both? I yeah, think that's, that's a question in general. Um, yeah, obviously we work mostly with CT. I guess that's more on the clinical side, what the surgeons prefer, right, Mike? I mean, or or yeah. well, uh, integrating yeah. x-ray with CT is some, what some people are doing more of. Obviously we're seeing that on our side. Yep. And, and we have um, our um, x-ray 2D to 3D solution specific for um, it's oh, for one of our deployed customers, um, you know, United Orthopedic for um, their knee solution, but it's specific for their product line. Um, so it's a solution that lets us segment um, x-rays to generate a model to be used for preoperative planning. And so then that model is fit, fed into our fit code to then run through to then present the optimal position of their implant system. Um, so yes, it is available, but it's only, again, it's available on a specific regulatory pathway um, for a, you know, product line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. I think we're uh, out of time here. So uh, I'd like to thank Mike uh, for joining us and Steven for, for giving a nice overview of the Simpleware tool, kind of showing us this is what it would do manually, or you can push this button. <laughs> that was kind of neat. Uh, the and, nice. yeah, thank you. <laughs> so uh, thanks a lot, everybody. And if we haven't gotten to your question, we'll, we'll try and get to it via email. Uh, this recording will be made available. If you have any questions, please contact us, myself, Mike, S Stephen, anytime um, if, if uh, you'd like to have further discussions. So with that, I, I'd like to, to end the webinar.